Hello, everybody. This is Terry Nance. I want to welcome you to Armor Bear Awakening. I tell you, it's an exciting day. I believe we're in the last days. There's really, it's very obvious. And God wants to use you. And God wants to bless you. God wants to use your church. God wants to lift up your pastor. And he's desiring. And you know, those who hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. I mean, begin to seek the Lord and begin to find out what you can do to be a blessing to someone else. Uh, if you've enjoyed these broadcasts, be sure and subscribe. Send it to everyone you know, your friends, family, your church, your pastor. Let them get a hold of this. And I'm, I'm telling you, it'll radically change their life because it's what an armor bearer is. An armor bearer is a servant. I had someone call me one day and say, oh, you're just trying to take an Old Testament office and make it New Testament. I said, man, if you read my material, you're missing the point. Armor bear is not an office. It's an attitude. It's the heart of a servant. Now, I've been into churches that have um, ministries that are called armor bears, and they're there to assist the pastor. They're there to undergird him and to do things and make sure things are set up and ready. Hey, I mean, that's, that's, uh, they're called adjutants or they're called other things. It's no different in the military than an officer having people that take care of them, drive for them, do other things, you know, and, and that's fine. And that may be something God has called you to do as an office. And that's great. Now in the New Testament, you're going to, you're not going to find that, but we're taking something from an Old Testament and we're bringing it in the New Testament, but it's the heart. It's, it's the attitude, which is the most important. Now, subscribe. If you enjoy this program, go to godsarmorbear.com. If you enjoy this, I'm, I am going to go in to book number two, which is on, we're starting on page 11. We put both books together. This is called Bloom Where You're Planted. And the very first chapter is called The Hour of the Local Church. So I want you to hear this because this is where we're at. From the prophetic signs happening every day, it seems Jesus is coming soon. This is why I feel such an urgency about each member of the body of Christ finding his place and remaining faithful so that we can be productive in God's kingdom. I believe this is the hour of the local church. You know, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, it says, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together as in the manner of some. And, and, and it says, especially as you see the day, it's capitalized, the day approaching. And so you say, well, what is that? The day, the day that Jesus sets his foot on this earth. So what is he saying? You have got to get together. There is a corporate anointing. There is something about a corporate anointing. Well, I just want to watch it on the web. I just want to watch it on TV. Well, that's great. That's good. But there's not a corporate anointing. You're not going to sense the anointing when people are gathered together. And the Holy Spirit is in the midst of them. Two or three are gathered together. Now, he's there with you wherever, of course. But there is a corporate anointing that comes together. And there is a community of believers that are trusting God. Throughout the New Testament, they gather. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit was a gathering of people. The the manifestation of God's Spirit, 3,000 got saved. They met on Solomon's porch. Then they divided into homes and they met in the homes. They, they served communion. They worshiped Jesus. They, they taught the word. They listened to the apostles and the church grew and grew as those who were being saved. And it was all done out of community. It's, it's not done. Well, I'm just going to get two or three of us together. We're going to live the rest of our days. Well, you know, Hey, Jesus loves you, but here's the thing. There's no evangelism outreach. You're not, uh, you're not discipling. You're not making disciples. Uh, you're feeding each other truth, but you're not making disciples. And if you're not making disciples, we really need to take a look to see what we're doing. Now, the local church is the hub from which all ministry gifts are to function and the center out of which they are to flow. In the local church, you find what is needed to build the character of Christ in us. Each member of the body of Christ should discover her gift 
or his gift or calling and become fully connected to the local church, submitting to one another, submitting to the God called pastors, elders, and leaders in our life. When people come into my office desiring to become a part of the local church, my first question is always, you know, when people move, well, what, what church were you a part of? And if they say, well, you know, I, I really don't feel called to just stay in one local church. Oh, well, that's fact, huh? Well, here's the problem. Then I don't know you. Well, I feel like my gift needs to be used. Well, the, you know, the Bible tells me as a leader to know those who dwell and, and work among others. So I don't know you. So no, I'm not about to give you a place in ministry until I know you. That's a responsibility a pastor and a leader has. Well, I just believe God's just called me uh, just to go to different places. Well, be my guest, but if a leader's got any sense at all, he's not going to give you the pulpit because number one, all you're wanting to do is to, is to promote your gift. You're not looking to be a blessing to that house. That's the fact. And there's where you get into false prophets and false teachers. And we make, we make mistakes. Now, you can tell what type of Christian you're dealing with by the answer you get. Millions of Christians attend church services on Sunday mornings, but they're never committed uh, physically or spiritually to the church. The reasons for attending, range, for not attending, ranges from uh, tradition, religious duty, social work, other things. I mean, people come for different reasons. You got to know that you're called. You got to know that you're important. And you also got to know God needs you. So I don't mean meaning to point this finger, but God needs you. You are needed. Your pastor needs you. The church needs you. You've got a gift. Bring it to the table in Jesus' name. Father, I bless everyone watching this broadcast. And I thank you, Jesus, for the anointing of God on them. Amen. Something good is going to happen to you.